$7.40 for a new lug nut from the Honda dealer. It doesn't even come in a Honda bag. Alright, we got an 8th generation Honda Civic here. It needs new rear shocks, so come along. I'll show you how I do it. And of course, I'm going to chalk both front wheels like that. And I'm going to jack up the back of the vehicle, back here on the tow hook. And once I get it up in the air, I'm going to put jack stands right here on these brackets. Huh? One on this side, one on the other side. Alright, now the shock lives right in this area. So, we're going to have to go in through the trunk. And on each side, I'm just going to show one side. We're going to have to get this out of the way. So we got to pull a few clips off and move this out of the way. All right, first thing we'll do, this piece right here, we should be able to just reach in there and pull up. And that's it, it'll pop off. You can see there's a, there's a little clip right here, a little clip right there. And now, this whole piece can be pulled out. And while we're right here, let's grab that little clip. All right, we'll just pop this clip out. Just like that. And now you'll see we can we can move this out of the way and we can pull this up and over. Just like that. And now our assembly is going to be right back in there. We'll go ahead and take out there's a couple more clips right over here. We'll pull those out so we won't damage this carpet. All right, from back here, I think the easiest thing to do is we'll just get this right out of the way. And now there's a better shot right there. We got a clip right here. That's just one that pulls out. And then we got one right here where you have to unscrew it. One right here and one right here. We could probably just get away with pulling that one and this one and moving it back out of the way and we should be good. Now for ease of filming, all I did was pop this out, it's just held in place by four clips, and I'm taking this whole piece out. You can see, now I can film good, I won't have that piece of carpet in the way, but if I wasn't filming, I would just pull it back far enough where I could get to that, right there, and then I'd be good to go. Looks like somebody lost their batteries in there. And I like to do this interior work with a new pair of gloves before I get them all dirty. So I usually do this first. There's a shot of what they look like without the uh, interior in. All right, from the rear of the car, I'm just gonna put the jack right here and jack it up. I am gonna remove this rubber pad so I don't damage it. All right, now we'll take the wheel off. Uh, the lug nuts are 19 millimeter. If you don't have an impact, you're gonna have to break these loose while the tire's still touching the ground. That one broke. piece of crap just rusted right off and this one looks a bit angry I'm gonna put some uh, penetrating oil on that thing all right we're gonna go ahead and try to break this free you're gonna need a five millimeter hex to go on the top here helps to have one in a 3 8 inch version and then a 14 millimeter wrench 
because the whole thing's going to turn. Come on, there we go. You want it all the way down in there. Okay, good. It broke free. So now we can just take a some kind of gear wrench or something, zip it off. All right, there's a good look at your uh, shock there. And now we're just going to take a little bit of stress off the uh, suspension here. We're just going to put the jack up under the uh, trailing arm there. We're going to put it in a spot where we don't bend anything. I'm just going to lift it up a little, take a little bit of the pressure off. And then we'll come down here. We'll remove this 14 millimeter bolt right there. All right, now you got to put yours where, in a spot where you feel comfortable. This is where I like mine, so I'm not bending these flanges here. Anytime I'm working around suspension and springs, safety glasses. Now, I'm just going to lift it up a little bit. Just enough to take the pressure off. Now we're good. Now, all my jack is doing is compressing the suspension a little bit. The jack stand is still holding on. I just want to note the, the weight of the vehicle is still on this jack stand. All right, you can see where the shock comes down. We're going to take this 14 millimeter flange bolt out. Just going to use my impact. Sometimes they can be in there a little tight. In this case, she popped right out. Honda recommends you replace these, by the way. Unfortunately, you gotta wrench it all the way off. Definitely helps to have some kind of gear wrench like this. Then we can take we can take the nut off. You're supposed to replace this too. All right. Now we got this top plate and the ridges face up, and then we got this rubber damper here, and we'll just we'll leave that right where it is. And we'll just pull the shock out. All right. Now usually we can just compress the sh the shock up a little bit and then manhandle it out. Just like that, you kind of got to pull it out of that rubber bushing that's up there. That's what it looks like out. You can see this one's not even, not even returning. This thing is definitely shot. Alright, we'll be putting KYB shocks in today. There's the part number on this vehicle. Made in USA, all right. Um, if you've watched my videos, you know. There's a few manufacturers that I prefer over others. NGK, Denso, and one of them is uh, KYB. I like these. I like them, they do a good job. You can see this one comes with the lock nut on top, so we're good there. And then like I said, Honda re recommends you replace the bolt here. And you can read it. There's the part number of this bolt for this model. Obviously make sure you get the right parts for your model. Where's this one made? Yeah, this one's made in USA too. And as always, compare your parts. Make sure they're the same. And in this case, it comes with the bushing up here. Other um, manufacturers, I'm not sure if they come with this bushing and if you got to replace it. But at least in the case of these KYBs, it comes with it. All right, now that the uh, strut's out, this thing pops out easy. You can see there's a void right here, a little hollow area, and then it's raised like that. So the raised portion goes in like that. We'll set this in place once we put the strut in. So we'll just keep these right here, right where we can grab them. All right, and when we put this up in there, we just want to make sure this little section of rubber, we'll make sure it goes in that hole. All right, let's get this thing on. We usually just pop these off. Should extend. There we go, now it's all extended. Now we can set it up into place. 
All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it up into place. Once I get it up in there, I'm going to compress going to compress this in a little bit and then I'm going to get this home where it's supposed to be. Just like that. All right, if you did it right, it should be centered in there just like it is. All right, now what I'm going to have to do, you can see the hole's not lined up right there. I'm going to have to lift this up and to pull it up, manhandle a little bit, pull it up, and get the new bolt in there. All right, take our new bolt. And sometimes these can be fun. Right there, I got it started by hand. Avoid the temptation to run it in with your impact. You will cross thread it and you'll be very unhappy. And it's a good idea, come on this side, look and make sure that bolt is coming through that hole properly. And using hand tools, just gonna gently bring it in. These things are very easy to cross thread because the it's a very tight fit. That's why I'm doing it slow and by hand. I want to feel if there's any resistance. And basically, I'm going to bring, you can see it, I'm going to bring this bolt almost to where it's touching, but not quite. All right, good enough. All right, now that we got that in place, we're gonna come in here, get this set up. We'll just take this nut off real quick. Take our rubber, slide it over there, get it down into position. It should kind of pop into place like that. And then we'll take our little washer plate here, set it down, and then we'll get the nut started. Because it's a lock um, nut, it's only going to go so far. Now we're set up. We'll leave it right there. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to jack the vehicle up right where we have it until our uh, the vehicle comes off of our jack stand. And then the, the load of the vehicle will be on the suspension. So now the suspension will be loaded, and then we can tight, tighten up all our fasteners to, uh, to the specs. And here's the main reason we want to do this. This rubber bushing right here, we don't want this to get all twisted up. We want this to be under load, under tension when we tighten it so it doesn't get all damaged. Alright, as you can see, it's just, it's just off. The vehicle's just off the stand here. But we still got it there for safety. So now we'll go ahead and tighten it up to spec. All right, so the spec for this vehicle is 43 foot-pounds for that lower bolt. Um, I believe that's all vehicles except for the SI, and I believe the SI is 51 foot-pounds. So let's go down there and torque it to 43. Forty-three point one. All right, with the suspension still loaded, we're going to come in here and tighten this up.
All right, now you'll feel it snug up like that. It's only like 22 foot pounds. We'll get it snug like that, and that's it. We're done. And be mindful of plastic pieces like this. This clip broke off, so I'm gonna have to uh, zip tie that on there. There, good as new. All right, now we can take the load off the suspension. All right, now's a good time. Look over your work. We know we got that button back up. We know we got that tightened down. And we know we got our lower bolt back here. We got that tightened up. Everything looks good, everything's in position. Let's go get the interior in. Now getting this interior back in is pretty easy. Um, when it comes out, it comes out with these, the second half of the clips already in place. But we'll take those out and then uh, we'll put it in without the clips. That way it's easier. We'll put this in and then the screw head will go in. We just make sure to get it over this hump over here. We'll just put the one half of this, the clips in here. We'll take the pin portion, and we'll stick them in. All right, we're, we'll take our clip here. We'll get it back in place, just like that. Just make sure everything's tucked back in. And on the inside here, we want to make sure that this, this is tucked back under there properly behind the seat. And then, yeah, our mounting, our trim hole right there should line up. Then we can just get that into place, just like that. Then we'll just set the bottom piece back into place right here kind of easy and then we'll pop those pop those clips in we just need to make sure these two clips right here are lined up with the two holes you see it should snap right into place like that and now with this piece folded up and over now we can get this piece in now there should be this clip here which there is and then this one, which is hanging on for dear life, and then this one's been broken off. There's supposed to be three that kind of go, go right down in here and kind of clip it in from the bottom. And then these just snap in the top right there. So we'll go ahead and snap that into place. And before you hammer it down, make sure it's clipped down below. And then make sure that this little edge this rubber edge is on top of this. Then you can press all the clips in. Then we'll just close this up. We'll double check. Make sure everything looks good like we were never here. Looks good. Get this tire back on. I want to make sure these are centered. And we'll make sure to pull the wheel chocks. 
Alright, last thing we'll do, we'll tighten our wheel lug nuts to 80 foot pounds. And some shocks are susceptible to squeaking. So uh, it's not a bad idea when they're brand new, before you install them, take a block of wood, just slowly compress them, let it expand. Obviously this one won't because it's broken. Let it expand, then compress it again slowly. Do that a couple times, that can help prevent squeaks on your brand new shocks. Well there you go, that's how I do the rear shocks on these 8th generation Civics. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.